Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch. It's another Saturday and we're here to check on our bison, feed them, refill their water, do all the great things. So if you saw our last video, they arrived last week. And so it's been so fun to have our 24 animals on property in our little small pasture here. Now we're not close enough to check on them every day, but our friend Steve has been so kind to do that. So he's been over here feeding him some cubes and making sure everything's looking good for their food and their water and that we haven't had any big issues. However, we did put out two round bales of hay for them and so Steve kind of let us know that the hay was getting low. So Wednesday night Jeff and one of our teenagers came on out and refilled up the hay and checked on them and everything was looking good. So we really appreciate Steve helping us out with this and being here so close to our animals. Now. We just pulled in. Um, Jeff's not here with us right now. Jeff's actually at Steve's today, helping with um, working his animals. So hopefully we'll get to check in on how that went in a little bit. When I pulled up to the property, our sweet neighbor with his cows had his bull that he was rounding up to getting off our property. So it's nice that he's getting him off, however, it wasn't great to see what he had been doing on our property. So by the time we made it in to check on our ladies at the small pasture, Nathan and Tiffany are with us and Nathan said, hey, come check this out. So he's been pacing up and down this line, digging up this dirt. And it goes that way too. So I'm not really sure what's going on, what he's doing over here. We've got to get our property fenced off, keep that animal off our property so he doesn't start messing with our animals. Um, he is a bull, so we've got a lot of ladies over here and you need to stay away from our ladies. So <laughs> yay, fun times. Um, let's go ahead and check on the water and we'll get a couple of looks at the bison before we head out to get our jobs going this morning. Okay, so here's the water. The float seems to be working great. Um, it's holding its line really well. It's not too overflowing at all. It looks great and obviously the bison have been able to drink and it's filling up just fine. They've been watching us and you can definitely see where they've been uh, laying down and rolling in that dirt. Yeah, just like that. Show them how it's done. They really love that sandy dirt. Okay, so I'm up here at the big huge water tank. Got to check and see what's our level, how they done for the week being out here. Um, so here it is. There's actually quite a bit of water. So Nathan was down here. So you can kind of see the numbers. So Nathan was out here tapping for me to help give me a real number of what we're looking at. So it's about 1600, so it's about halfway. So we'll definitely be doing one, maybe two trips for water to top it off. And again, looks like our 3000 gallons is working out really well. girl with the pump. And for the girl with the pump it goes up the red tube around the other bumpers and then the the top. All right, we've gotten our water all refilled. We are out in pasture six. Going to get this guy all set and ready for our herd to move over next week and then make room for Steve's um, nine bison to join up in that little pasture while we get them ready to join the new herd. So we've got some stuff to do. We've been walking the fence line and we've been collecting the old barbed wire um, along it. So here's what we've collected so far. So it's going well. The problem with this barbed wire is it looks just like the spiky pokey vine things. And so it takes a minute to see it. It's kind of rusty. It's got the little barbs on it. It looks like a pokey plant. So 
We're, we need to finish this line heading north and then we need to turn going west and follow that line. Um, I think that's the only things we have left to really clean up um, other than checking the fences because we have a few repair spots to continue to fix up which we might end up finishing early next week because we do have to put two gates on this pasture. Three gates. Three gates on this pasture. So we got plenty to do. So as we've been cleaning up along this long line, um, we found some old T-posts and we've seen these before and they like to break off and we don't want them to. So we're trying to wiggle them out. The kids are working down there. Tiffany's got this one. But when they break, we want them to be, if they break, we want them to be all the way down deep so we can rebury it. We don't want this to be a tripping hazard or just you know, danger to our animals. We've been finding all the trash and we've been finding the old barbed wire. Nathan tried to do some raking, but he wasn't able to get down into the lower pasture with the tractor. So he was gonna take it back. Maybe he's gonna rake over here for us, test it out. Looks like he is. Yeah, so Go rake, baby. We'll, we'll let you see any more exciting things we gotta pull out. Cause I'm sure we'll find something. Oh, well, there's always exciting things to pull out. What'd you find over here, Chica? fun stuff. More barbed wire? Oh yeah. It's like a whole plant growing out of the ground. Yeah. And it's all just under this one root. Awesome. Yeah, you show that barbed wire who's boss. You tell it. All right, Clark, how's that post coming? Good. Slow? Yeah, work it. Move the post. Right, these things are not coming out. No, they're not. They're getting wiggly though. Seriously, I got like a three inch circle around mine and it's still like... Not happening. Hey Clark, what do you got there? A tea puss to pull out. Yeah, how did you get it out? Just putting all your weight against it. Yeah, what did you pretend it was like? A tooth. Yep, what do you do with teeth? Wiggle it. Yep, wiggle it, and push it, and pull mm -hmm. it. You told me that, right? Yep. Man, we didn't realize it was that far down. Let's look at that bottom. Show me where the line was. Where was it in the dirt? Back here. Yeah, so we got, whew. All right, go put that guy in the back of the truck. Go see if you can wiggle another one loose. Uh -huh. this. Okay, so Nathan's on the tractor and one of our sections to clean up were some PVC pipe. So it looks like he's got those. So we're gonna load them in the truck also. What you got there? Friends. I'm They're so the clingy kind. <laughs> Were they friends in Lopez places? Yeah. <laughs> Usually yeah. those are the clingy kind, aren't they? <laughs> so true. So they're building a pile. So we've been cleaning up more barbed wire because that's awesome. And as I'm like driving along, I like hit this really big bump. And I was like, dude, what was that? So Clark's got some of the smaller ones. Literally a pile of posts. I was just sitting in my pasture. I was like, what? So I've, uh, I've got a lot more work to do here. We're definitely not done. It's like, oh, this line isn't that long. Look, you can see the bison over there. Yep. We're getting closer, but it's so not done yet. I think this is like the worst line we've cleaned up. So we stopped by the feed store this morning to get more cattle cubes. They were out. Yeah, the bison don't understand that. I think they think they deserve some cubes. As we snack and look at them and they hear our bags rustle, they come on over close. All right, howdy guys. So I got back from working some buffalo and time to take care of ours, which means I'm gonna go ahead and get some hay. And then I can kind of fill you on some details of the actual buffalo. Well, the herd's on the move. I think they believe the tractor's for them this time. <laughs> All righty, there's some hay, ladies. She's just enjoying her dirt time. I'm waiting for them to be like, um, where's the cubes? <laughs> They're still staring at it. Just dropped off that load, and of course they're gonna go check at it. But uh, I did count them, 
And I do have still 24, so success. One week, they survived. And uh, I've been looking at the vegetation, and it looks like most of the stuff that we had on the ground is <laughs> dead or it's eaten. So I've checked around a little bit. They've got a number of these dirt wallow kind of things all throughout. And I, I'm guessing it's probably just for, you know, I don't know. I could just be guessing here really is all it is. Don't catch me lying. So we've got some out here. There's another one right here. Um, and there's still a couple more over here. So they are warming up to us a little bit. Uh, they're coming up to us, so it's not too bad. But So this last week we uh, got told by Steve that around Tuesday they only had maybe, out of the two bales, I think one bale left between the two of them. Um, and they, at that rate, would probably run out of hay around Friday. So I didn't want that. So I came up and came to see the buffalo. By the time I could get here Wednesday night and drop off a third bale, um, it was black. Um, I tried to get some pictures on the phone, and it's just not doing it. But I turned the headlights on, and of course the bale of hay is right in front of your headlights. You can't see anything. And so funny experience coming in the gate. I had my son Grant with me. I thought, well, hey, I've got some rear lights behind me, so why don't I just back up and turn around? So you swing around and you start backing up, and right when you swing the back end around and it light your way in front of you, what do you have? You've got like 24 buffalo all staring at you in the dark, like 15 feet behind you. <laughs> like It is eerily kind of creepy, actually. But um, I've got some really bad footage, as you can tell, of the actual experience. Um, lighting was just horrible. I'm going to drop off another bale of hay. I think they still had about one. So I'm going to drop off another bale of hay, and hopefully that should make it to Saturday. I don't want to put out a third since they had some residual left. Howdy, girlfriend. What you doing, huh? Huh? Yeah. She looks good. In fact, I kind of like the way they look a week after I've now had them. So that's... They're looking pretty good. I like it. Both hay things are delivered. One thing I want to do is this is the last week that I'm going to have them in this small pen and after this we're going to be putting them out to pasture six and that's the stuff that Charlotte's been cleaning up with Nathan and Tiff and, and Chica and Dog. So you're just going to get to understand that I don't call my kids by their actual names. But what I want to do before we let them out, because that's a 16 acres pat sized pasture, I want to catalog kind of the animals I have. And the reasons I want to do this is because I want to be able to document um, kind of the condition that they're in at the start. Um, that way if something turns different or something seems a little odd, I at least have something that I can compare it to later down the road. Um, I also want it to be able to see kind of their body conformation. Which ones look good, which ones don't look good, just genetically. Um, see if there's ones that's like, you know what, I want to cull that one. Um, sell it, whatever it is. Um, and just to kind of have a record. They all have some different uniqueness to them. I just want to make sure I have them documented and be able to see it so that way I can keep a record. So um, I have noticed that sometimes records aren't always kept by typical ranchers. You know, it's kind of shoddy sometimes. Um, and I really want to try and do better at that. Excel spreadsheets, total geek out on it. So 
um, I am going to try and get pictures of all the various different animals. There's 24 of them. And uh, we're going to see how this goes. Um, if they would come up to the water trough, it would be a lot easier. But otherwise, it's going to go to the tractor and, and go on from there. Okay, so this is actually proving to be a little bit difficult. I was able to get a few numbers, but they bunch back up again. And I'll be honest with you, I do not have a master sheet that has all the numbers on it so that I can check off when I got one. So I am undoubtedly going to forget some of these numbers. Ah, oh, crap, that's an actually a good one. The other thing that makes this difficult is the ear tags are not always on the same side of the head. And when I take a picture, I've got to know which animal it is I'm looking at. Otherwise, it's just a random animal. So <laughs> I'm trying to get those, um, but actually when I'm talking and they start looking at me and I'm talking to you guys, um, it's always a perfect shot. But by the time I get the camera all set up, it's not. So anyway, back to doing this. I'm going to run around these guys and see what I can find. Okay, I'm being a little daring right now. I'm standing in here with a buffalo trying to... Ah, crap, just stepped in it. Anyway, standing in here with a buffalo trying to get some pictures. And I think I'm getting most of them, but gosh, there's some elusive ones. So I'm going to see if I can do this without getting gored. I don't recommend this. They are pretty peaceful and used to humans, but that makes it even more dangerous. I'm going to be pretty safe and standoffish still. Yeah, you're giving that look when you go potty, huh? All right, you guys are all just staring at me. 93, I see you over here. All right, this is all you're gonna let me do is just get these occasional shots. B9, baby. Oh, B9, ugh. There you are. Okay, let's see if I can get you a better shot. Switching to guns, meaning photography. Well, that's a pretty good shot. Okay, B9, bam, right there. Okay, you're number three. You know, I seem to get you a lot, number three. 93, right here. Girlfriend, you are like the most easy one to take a picture of. All right, this one is B1. This is B2, boy two. B13, boy 13. Okay, I'm all about doing this Crocodile Dundee out in nature junk, but uh, I'm not going to go like walk in the middle of the herd. So I'm going to try and move the tractor around, mix them up a little bit, and kind of get a better position. I think I've got all the pictures that I can go ahead and take right now because I'm seeing the same animals over and over. I think I've got everybody. Honestly, from the first day of that traveling to now, there's, I actually think that some of these animals look better and it might've been just the stresses or something. I don't know. It, it could be that it, it wasn't as muddy up here as it was over there. I, the coats look better that way, but um, the animals are actually pretty cool. And they're just coming up to the tractor, rubbing on it and doing different things. And it's kind of cool, actually. Um, just seeing them do their stuff. I just got back from Steve's earlier today. We're helping him do his buffalo. And you know, it took a little bit longer than I think it did last year. Partly because there's people like me that have bought buffalo, but still keep them at Steve's. So we ended up having to do, I think, more animals than typically would have been done. I got some footage just from different spots that I was at, but in general, you know, it's not my place. It's not my buffalo, it's not my facilities, that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm not gonna sit there and try and videotape everything. I'm there to help him. I'm not there to get footage. So I did get some few things. Um, there, there are some videos of some of the animals that we got. We re-tagged them all. I will tell you that I have two buffalo boys. Um, there, I'm only gonna get eight animals actually. So two of them are buffalo boys. They are three and a half. They will be turning four this year. And um, I will tell you the weights. Number 199 came in at a weight of 1,622 pounds, and he's three. 
The other one came in, I think, at 1460, give or take 10 or 15 pounds. We'll see him next week. Um, to kind of compare that, Steve's buffaloes, he's got two bulls. One's Early, is his name. Um, he was 1900 and some change. And the other one was Jack, and he's two years older than my boys. And I think he was 1690, so he was only 70 pounds heavier than, than my bull. So if that weight is really correct on that bull I have that's three and 1600 pounds, that dude is gonna be some serious size. So, you know, that'll be cool. I always love having big bulls. Anyway, I think it went well with Steve and at his place, um, there's a lot of people there to help out. It, it was nice that way. Um, things never go to plan, as, as you thought. Cataloging is done. I need to go through the pictures, kind of arrange them by each animal, and kind of associate them with their bio biography sheet, if you want to call it like that. All right, guys, we appreciate you joining along with us. We're going to kind of wrap it up here. While I was doing all the cataloging for the buffalo and taking all their pictures, um, Charlotte and the rest of the gang were over in Pasture 6, kind of wrapping up the cleanup there. We've got it, f I think, as much as we can see so far, pretty much wrapped up, ready to go. So next week, um, the goal is to take all those buffalo and open up the passageway and let them into pasture six. Um, we're gonna have to do three gates next week as well. Fill back up that water because Steve is gonna have his buffalo delivered. We appreciate you joining along in this journey as we're doing all this stuff. It, it's moving along really, really well. Of course, there's always hiccups along the way, but you're getting to share them with us. So if you're wondering how you might be able to support the channel in any way, honestly, the best part is just to like that little button down at the bottom, subscribe to us, just watch it. Um, feel free to comment and, and provide some suggestions. So this is just the first stage. We have finished our year mark, and this is kind of what we've accomplished so far. But um, anyway, we will catch you next week as we get going back up on this again. And until then... So long. With you, I want to stay with you.